Hey, a pleasant, good, happy new year, everybody. We're joined in the first episode of 2022. Um, I hope you all had a good holiday season, a safe holiday season, as we're here to talk the playoff preview of some football teams for you. We also had a surprise win of two NFC football playoff teams uh, this week for me that we'll get to uh, later on in the show, <coughs> Cowboys. Um, uh, that's just the team that it's involving. At least we also are going to give you some uh, NHL news around the league as well as there's been a lot more. Goal- Usually you see defense being the proponent of one team's come back from long breaks. Nobody told many of these teams that because no, they did. not I mean, gosh, the first game back was seven to eight. Eight to seven. Yeah, that's the game I recapped last week for my usually I try to do one or two recaps on my channel per week. But uh, still, first and foremost, before we jump into the week of the NHL we had the first week back and also get into football. How are you doing this fine new year? Only three oh, days. Man. Three days ago. <laughs> I know it's only three days in. First of all, I hope you had a great and wonderful, happy new year. And I hope, I hope all you folks out there had a great and happy, wonderful new year as well, too. Uh, we had a great new year. So, I mean, you know, um, what could be better than hockey finally being back? Um, got to watch a really good winter classic, um, that was a pretty good game there up until the third period Which where the goal scoring was a little bit tighter. But... Uh, yeah, I was just going to say it was really good up until like the, the start of the third period. In the third period, man, St. Louis just kind of broke it open, and then that was pretty much the end of that. Yeah. And, I would also have to say that was probably Thomas Rhett's coldest performance he ever did. Uh, yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, I would have to guess. I mean, the, dude, the dude's a good country artist, but he's singing about t shirts, and you're in. Negative thirty degree. I mean, Weather, you know, have, have beach songs uh, uh, go, and well, it, it was a fu- funny. The, it was a funny vibe. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the blues came in in beach theme. Yeah, the, the they was it St. Louis. St. Louis. Yeah, they came in dressed as like Hawaiian. Like yeah, they had sandals and on and flip flops. Yeah, <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> right. Came, so hey, that was basically them just making fun of like. I think the league not realizing you probably could have done this game in the afternoon. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's in Minnesota. This is not one of the ones that had to be at night. Like, you know? Yeah, like you could have done this during the day. It would have been a little warmer maybe, uh, you know. but Because that's not sun that would have affected the ice like Tahoe because Tahoe was temperatures combined with sun. Exactly. There, it had any temperature. You just had some it didn't matter. Yeah, it didn't, didn't matter. You could have had – so That's what it, I mean. It just would have had a little bit of a sun – uh, warmth and depth. Hey, look, but, it's bright. Wow, it's yeah. bright. It's still bloody cold, but hey, it's bright. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but no, that's, you know, uh, I, we talked about this on the last show. And, you know, I, n- looking back, a little bit of hindsight here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick on the NHL a little bit here, and I'm going to say this. I really think that they should have only just had the Winter Classic on That's It. Okay. Alan Walsh, like, actually, the agent I brought up uh, before for the podcast I was talking about, uh, yeah. the Agent Provocateur podcast, also recommend that to people if they haven't checked it out. But uh, he tweeted that out about the day the day of the Winter Classic, I, because he's the he's the one that tweeted the sword and flurries back at one time. Too. Oh, that, oh, that's, oh, okay. That's Alan. Um, okay. He's a very outspoken agent, as many know. But yeah, um, slightly. Uh, he he has no problem putting his opinions out but i think that was right like you and the, the bigger thing is he said the second part which is the biggest issue why are you putting one game at the same time at least if you're going to do it on the same day why is there another game in the same time slot i see that that's an even that's an even bigger issue duh. that should have been able to be resolved just by a meeting of one person looking at their thing whether it's on their phone yeah screen you like know. this or on a sheet of paper like this, that somebody should have been able to go, oh, wait a minute. Why do we have a game scheduled at the same time as the winner? Like, even if you were doing them on the same day, you should have been like, we have six games at one. Just put this game at one o'clock also. Like, people are just going to watch whatever fans they're the fan of at that point anyway, because there's six games at one o'clock. That's what I mean. So, like, yeah. So, I mean, you could have just put it in the different time slot hour there that but i agree i think they should go back to making it the mecca where it's just the one game like you were saying but if they don't do that the worst part to it is you made two mistakes compounded into one 
you put games on the same day and then put a game at the same time, time. Yeah. as Mecca event. So yeah. if you, it, you basically doubled up on your mistakes at that point, that's like a defenseman that turns over the puck and then just watches the guy skate into the offensive zone to score and doesn't care about getting back on defense at that point because he turned over the puck. Like, so- that's you you shouldn't be talking to... about the Flyers like that now, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that would be one specific individual. But, but like I said, you shouldn't be talking specific. about the Flyers. <laughs> that, would be, that would be specifically at someone that is in the lineup. For all the right reasons, he should be kept in to maintain his streak. But we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. And and he's not even the one I'm talking about. <laughs> Well, I no either one. I mean, it, it either starts with a Y or a B. Either one, I don't care. So, all right. Um, but we had some really good hockey games back. It's great to see that the NHL was uh, allowing games to be played again. Um, it looks like there's going to be uh, the Canadians uh, took a little shutdown. I also saw today that Anaheim. Um, also shut down practice today voluntarily for an overabundance of yeah, caution. And then people started immediately tweeting out, as of now, game is still on. So, okay. And I, I also would operate did under see the too, now, right. Is on. I, right. I also did see, too, that some Flyers players were uh, admitted to the list. And, uh, and Gates a, and, um, yeah. It was uh, Jackson. Seeker. And Seeger. No, Sealer. 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 Yeah. 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 Seeger's the baseball player. Yeah. Sealer. Sealer. There we go. Sorry. Seeger's <laughs> the famous baseball family. Yeah. 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 And, and Seeger, um, <laughs> also, the Bob Seeger is a great musician of the Silver Bullet kind. Anyway. Well, yeah. Or, or a famous musician family or baseball family. Yeah. Either, either way. way. Yeah. Either way. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, so they're they've made some adjustments that we talked about on the last show where they've uh, now they there's a taxi squad. They've changed the um, protocols to where uh, now players can go on the taxi squad. And we talked about this on the last show, too. Also, the but, five days for the yeah. asymptomatic year. Right. Right, so they they changed it now from what was it, uh, ten, ten days? Ten. Yeah, right, ten. so it was ten so days now down to five. If you're asymptomatic, um, you still have to have two clear tests within the span one. of. Oh, okay. I, I thought I saw one when it. All right, then they did change that then. Five days, okay. but I could be wrong. I swore okay. when I read it though, it just said one. Negative. I thought you needed two clear tests. I do remember it being two, but I swore right. So they I might have changed it. When they, I, it said one, but I could be wrong. Right, right. It was it was two, but they could very well have changed it. So that's kind of what we're going on as, as far as what we know right now. So we're just trying to keep you as up to date as we can. Um, as far as we know, there's hockey games being played, so that's all we care about. Well, it's also tough for the leagues from the same perspective when you have the people that are supposed to be guiding the league saying one thing one day, not to get down that rabbit hole too much, but then the next day, it's the exact opposite of what they said 48 hours before. So it's a little bit hard to be the commissioner of the, I will give them a pass on that because it's a little bit hard to be the health experts of these leagues when the health experts of the world don't even know what they're talking about. So do you hear what this guy's talking about? This is why we call him pro Joe. Cause he's the professor, but spot on my man. Look, I'm not asking Bateman to be, a health no, official. Sir Thomas, basically, when it comes, I'm to not health. asking him to be a health official, because that's not that's not what he is. Okay, he is the commissioner of the NHL. All right, so you give me some straight guidelines all the way through, and then follow through with them. Okay, don't give me this half butted stuff, which is what's been going on. They completely <clears throat> dropped the ball. No, I agree. Yeah, they should have had a the, the the biggest thing you guys brought up on off the wall, and I think it was back in November you might have first brought it up, but it was um the number of players. There should have been a concrete number of players. Exactly. When you made the line of we're canceling, well, not canceling, but postponing, postponing games, games or whatever. A later date, I had canceling in mind because of the IIHF. Um, postponing <laughs> um, <laughs> games. Uh, for that uh, period of time until yeah. you can make the money. So yep. that mm-hmm. 
that's kind of just the way I thought of it. Bruce. No, and see, that's that's what we talked about even back then. You know, like we saw this coming. I mean, come on, how could you not see this coming? Okay, you you it, when they already when they already started it with um, the Senators and the Islanders being two different players or the number of players equal equaling two different two players extra on the Ottawa team compared to the Islanders team. Now the Ottawa team didn't have any staff, but the Islanders had one staff and six players or seven players or something. So a total eight, something something like that. Right. Okay. And then they, then, then they did it again for the Calgary flames. Calgary only had six. Yeah. So well, they, Canada they did it once with Canada, Ottawa I'm trying and, to wonder cuz they know, did it with Canadian teams. I'm wondering if any of that and we're not going to ever know this information right was pushed from the government. Was pushed from the provinces cuz of how strict Canada's been compared to agreed. Yeah, you no know, no, it very well have could have, okay, but cuz we saw how the provinces have basically mandated themselves without mandating saying like we do not want you to have fans and then the teams accepted it basically yeah pretty much yeah i mean and they did the same thing with the ihf too they basically mandated and said you're only going to have 50 percent capacity and then they said well all right but they they i i don't know man that that was another very serious disappointment too that we didn't we we should be right now talking about um, finals, semifinals for the IIHF because the finals game started on the fifth, correct? Yeah, the fifth. It would have been two days. Well, two days from now. But, yeah, but I mean, we'd be talking about semifinals right now and 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 medal matchups. Yeah, and stuff you would be like talking that. about the top teams and exactly. And um, probably Canada, probably potentially still Sweden. Uh, you def- yeah, Finland there you got the U.S. Maybe uh, Russia, so maybe Russia. Yeah. Russia's yeah. the wild card because the last time Russia won was when they took no North of like guys that were already over in North America where they haven't done that for a while. And okay. then this year they didn't take any prospects who were over in North America. And one was the OHL's leading goal scorer. I can't remember his name, but okay. they only took guys that still were drafted, but were still playing over in Russia. So it's like oh. they wanted that weird tight knit, like inexplicable tight knitness, basically, which the last time they won was I think it might have been 2011, but it might have been before that. But the last time they won, I just remember was when same kind of. It was the same concept. They didn't take yeah. any prospects that yeah. were already over here. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they kind of went back to the same concept. That it seemed like. right, right. So and then plus everything that went down with with the whole IHF uh, being canceled um, as well too. So that was a big disappointment as well too uh, with that. And uh, Joe, so. We talked about the taxi squads. We talked about all these things that the NHL is doing, right? So now, what's the deal with the AHL? What's what's going on with the uh, with the junior teams or 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 the uh, minor league teams? Are they st- the, because now they're going to be majorly affected by these taxi squads, right? You know what I mean? And now well, the minors will be the jun unless if I mean if, the minors. I'm sorry, yeah, the minors. Yeah, the juniors. There's a lot of rules there. You wouldn't be able to just right. But I mean the minors, like the AHL teams, now are going to be missing a lot of guys. Or guys are. I mean, now they did change the taxi squad where guys can rotate now, so mm-hmm. you're not it's on the taxi squad, right? Days, yeah. Right, so you're not on the taxi squad, and then you stay on the taxi squad for the whole season. The difference is that can be played with still, because you're not on the taxi squad if you're scratched. Right. So if I, if I bring up Jerry Mayhew to say, scratch Jerry Mayhew, and then send down Patrick Brown, because he wasn't going to play in this game anyway, because I wanted, say, Cateson for more skating speed or something. Like, one of, one of those reasonings, or whatever your reasoning is, you could play with it that way. So it doesn't have the 20 continuous days. So it's going to be interesting to see what teams decide to do in that perspective. Yeah, that's what that's basically what I was trying to get to was the fact that teams now have a lot more flexibility with uh, the taxi squad players. And it also benefits the taxi squad players, too, to where they're not stuck on a taxi squad where they don't get to see any playing time. You know, they get rotated in and out to where they get to go back to the AHL team where they get to still play. 
Yeah, and also right now this taxi squad is only implemented to the All Star break, which which is literally a month, like two days right. extra than a month from right now. So right. it's not okay. like for the time being, this is the longevity plan. This is just the True. right now month monthly to the break plan, basically, because it seems like the NHL is still planning on it's not like they announced. The only league that announced they're not having the All-Star game is the AHL. The NHL okay. only talked about the Olympics, <laughs> where I, I have a feeling they're still trying to have the All-Star Classic, where yeah. the, the especially to make up for not <laughs> doing the other. And then you have the um, ECHL who announced the coaches for the All-Star Classic. So they're obviously planning on pushing ahead because that was just announced this week. Eric Wellwood, actually, former Flyer. Yeah, I saw that. I saw uh, that. <laughs> but, um, so, uh, it's, uh, it, it's, um, I think it's going to be to that point. I have a feeling it's going to last past that point, but, uh, it, but you have to reassess in a month because okay. it all depends what you read and what you go by. Because some things say within a month we might be where countries overseas are at now where you're at the down wave. So then you might be able to say, we don't need the taxi squads for the time being, yeah. or we could still be where London is where they're like starting the down wave, but still in the uptick wave at the same time where it's like this weird cluster mess. So it all kind of depends uh, where you're at at that time yeah, I'm with, you. Yeah. Uh, with the virus, where I think the safest move with the way you have the rules behind the taxi squads for this year to be better to the players would be just to have them. That's for the what rest I mean. Of the, yeah, I yeah think for the, the rest of the season? Would be just to have them for the rest yes. of the season. Yes. But will they do that because it does still, it's better for the players, but it's still not great. That Agreed. that would be that would be something that um, remains to be seen with the Players Association and the league getting you together know. Before the All Star break, to make those discussions. Do you know what, Joe? That question that I asked you, I think, will have more relevance if that takes place. If they extend the taxi squads to pass the All Star break, which I think they should. I really think they should just have yeah, I them. Also really answered your direct question. Yeah, I kind of just answered other no, things. No, <laughs> to, direct, yeah, the, to the direct question, <laughs> uh, the ECHL has had multiple guys move up to the AHL. Therefore, you're seeing ECHL teams sign guys from the Canadian equivalent of the NCAA yep. or the actual NCAA. You're seeing a lot of that. And you're seeing like the Garrett Melcalfs come up from the ECHL that the Phantoms got. The PTO Gold Center had a fantastic first game. You're seeing those guys get the opportunities. So on a, on a glass half full side, it's affecting them by, yes, teams are getting weaker because guys are moving up to the next level. Um, and guys are moving up to the NHL, making the HL weaker, but then the HL is bringing up people from the ECHL, making their ECHL team a little bit weaker. You're also potentially getting stronger with someone else that was an unknown. Yes, sir. Now being able to come in yeah. and do really well. And now you have that going forward, whoever that said person is, also with the rest of the people. Once exactly. Plus back. that said person gets an opportunity now at the next level. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? To showcase what they have. And, you know, I mean, th that's exactly what happened last year with how we got to see the likes of Cam York, Tyson Forrester, you know, Zade Wilson, how we got to see those guys because they got a chance to come up and play in the AHL because of the whole COVID taxi squad thing, you know, whatever, whatever. So those guys got to play. And, and a lot of a lot of teams in the NHL got to see those young guys play. And some of the a lot of the that's why I feel that a lot of the 2020 uh, draft picks are now playing a lot of them, like the, at least the first three rounds. A lot of those players are now starting to get ice time on their teams. Do you know what I mean? Where so they're they not were forced to get a cup of coffee at a higher level quitter. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. 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 Great point, man. Great point. So now we got games back. We got a month until the all star break, right? We both said that they're going to, yeah, we both said that they're going to at least do the all star break. Right. And they're going to use... like they're going to have the game to this because they never said they're not having the game. So my understanding is they're still having the game. Right. But from so, what I understood about the whole thing with the fact that the players weren't. Yeah. The but game. the whole thing 
that I'm trying to get to is the players were supposed to have this three week break with the Olympics. Yeah, because it was a combined break. You had the All Star game first, mm-hmm. I think, and then the Olympics. Yes, sir. Afterwards. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that's kind of what I'm getting to here now. So now that they're not going to have the Olympics, but now they've got, mm, I believe it's 115 games, I think, or something Something. crazy, stupid. Right. But they've got 115 games that they need to make up. Okay. They're going to put some in that time. Uh, Bill Daly, um, he was on, I can't remember if I was watching NHL Network or Sportsnet, but one of the things I was watching, Bill Daly came on, and um, he brought up how they're trying to figure it out with like all the powers that be basically around the league talking to them because you have to with hockey, with the physicality of the sport. He said, I can't just push you, you can't just push these guys out there four nights in a row to say, oh, we're making up four of your 12 games that have to be made up four nights in a row when you were supposed to be home with your family. Uh, but you, that's not going to go over well. That's not going to work too well. So where, um, you can mix in different things. So I think they're trying to figure out if the, yeah. it's a feasible option to actually fill in a lot of games there, yeah. or if it's more, they're just going to be able to fill in some because they technically agreement wise in the bargaining agreement agreed that this was going to be body rest time. Uh, the all-star break, at least for you guys is going to be body rest time with the Olympic break. They could say, well, for guys that didn't make the Olympic team, this would be body rest time, but you all would have been playing anyway. So why don't we try to make up some games in in this um, stretch? And they're going to do that. I guarantee they're going to make up games. I think the thing is to the degree of how much are they able to fit into that, because it's only really a two-week span. Like a little bit for that. So it's not like like 10 days. Yeah, it's not like it's that big of a time frame. I think people are thinking of it as like, a massive time frame when it's really only 10 days or like 12 days or something yeah, like or something like that, that yeah be able to fit games into so it'll make up some of them it's not right. going to solve your entire issue it's, i think the way the nhl is leaning towards going the ahl just extended its regular season calendar to the end of april where they usually end before that april 30th now is the end for the um, ahl which extends it a few days. The NHL already ends at the end of April, pretty much. Right, it's 15 so days, were, Joe. It's 15 days. 15, okay, 15 so days. Two, two but that's still yeah. not that much time. Nope. So you, like, you're going to have to, you still need off days built in for these guys. So you're going to have to do that. It's going to be interesting to see what they do. Because you don't want to go back to last year where sometimes you have guys playing it seems too much in a row where that's happened this year as well, like four out of sixes, five out of sevens, because that's not good for the sport you, either because then you yeah. were injured. Do you but remember? you have to count all that out. Do you remember, I think it was three years ago, like before COVID hit, where they had rotating uh, mandatory week offs or mandatory um, uh, bye weeks for the teams, Right. That was like three years, like right before COVID hit, they were wrote, they had started rotating by weeks for the teams, right? So I think that's what they might have to get back to um, for this season. I actually don't remember that. Oh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't remember that. <laughs> oh, I probably, okay. I probably just watched the games that were on and then just didn't even bother. Yeah, they, they would give a team like uh, five days, right? And it, and it, it happened okay, within so like – they played on Saturday. They would come back Thursday type. Or Friday. Yeah, Friday, yeah, Friday. Yeah, Friday. yeah, 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 right? So, but it was mandatory. Every team had to do it, right? That, I would agree with that then. I think for next season, if the world's back to more normalcy, especially after these last two seasons being so compact, that's something that would be only fair to the players to do with that. But point. see, what I think they might have to do, though, is get to that so that they can try to make up all these games and still give guys that time off that they were promised. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, I'm just saying that that I'm using that as a suggestion. That. Yeah, I think it will be tough to do that this year just because of the amount. Of, if we had, like, say, 50 games to make up compared to getting over 115 for like that, like okay. you're at a, like, unless if you're going to shorten the season and cut a block and say, you know what, forget 82 games, we're going to have everyone play 65. 
No, yeah. I wasn't going to cut any games. <laughs> um, and then, and then um, you would, or we're going to play seventy-two like the uh, minor leagues do instead of eighty-two, and then right. uh, we'll we'll just cut out ten. Um, now, <laughs> if this keeps going that way, I think the league might have to do that at some point because eventually yeah. you're not going to have the time on the calendar if you want to have right. the season start at the regular time next year. Exactly. Um, or or but, have things scheduled the way you have them scheduled for this year. Yeah, because now you're going to have to do, like, what I was saying earlier with the AHL um, extend its calendar. The NHL, I think, is going towards the direction of having to extend its calendar. And I don't think they want to have the regular season go that much into May. That's true. So but if they extend it for a week... Time, a week, though, I don't think that'll make – like, even within the two weeks, say you make up a total of 50 games, you still have – if 50, that's – 60, 70 you games, You still have yeah. over 60. To make, so it's like, yeah. I think at this point, you're looking at either summer hockey again or you're compromising at a certain point. Like, or you I, extend I this – yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, like, you're either going to have summer hockey or you might have to say – Look, it's probably more feasible for teams to get to 72 games and yeah. we'll somehow make sure everyone hits 72 so the playoffs are fair, whether we piss off Montreal or not. And then we'll make sure <laughs> that the team hit 72 games you know. so that the playoffs are fair. I mean. Would you, so, like, that's the, – the, and I'm not talking about the team Montreal. I'm talking about the government. Uh, yeah, so, like, the mm -hmm. the um, that's why I think they have to – get those going but from listening to what daily says listening to different podcasts uh gary's kind of stayed out of the spotlight rightfully so since third and things but uh the both of them kind of um hint towards like they're talking to the powers that be about just these things we've just been talking about for the last yep. 15 minutes yeah. what's the best direction to go um what's the best route going forward for us exactly basically? exactly well, man, I'll tell you what, I, I think that we got a lot of information here with the NHL um, there. There's we had a couple of games come back and play and they're just starting to get back into playing regular games again. You know what I mean? Like the 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 the, the winter classic was like that. Everybody came back for that winter classic. That was the first game back. Right. For that that whole stretch of games that. That, that set of games was the first games back for everybody, you know. Um, and now that they're starting to get into more regular games and starting to get the schedule back, and, you know, there's been some other teams that have had some pauses and some other things as well, too. And I think we're going to see that throughout the year, no matter what. Now, I think, I mean, it's just, I just think that's just how it's just going to be, where teams are going to have to either – they're going to start canceling or postponing games or they're just going to stop operations and I, I, they're just going to have to keep on keeping yeah. on doing what they're doing. We're we'll after to see going. I think the reason, the biggest reason they put the taxi squad in when I read about implementing the taxi squad was to have body. So you have, yeah. unless if you go over this quota on the same day of tests, you should be able to play your game because you have guys sitting there. Ready yeah, exactly. To. Yeah. So it's kind of like unless if you hit this number yeah. now, you should be good. Should be. So well. like it, where before it was basically, well, we don't have extra people. This team now has seven forwards. So like that it, it was a little bit it was a little bit different than you have defensemen playing like left wing. So Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah. That, that makes can't be having bit, that. That makes a little bit <laughs> that makes a little bit of a of a difference. Um you think? Yeah. <laughs> now I tell you what. Now let's. I want to. I want to jump into this because we found out some very interesting news today, of all days, when no football was being played. That so. Congratulations to the Eagles for making the playoffs. Uh, you guys clinched a spot, right, with the the Forty Niners game, right, and the Packers game. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks to um. A million different things I never try to follow. I just wait till they tell us we can watch the playoffs. And I mean, you that. know, uh, <laughs> like, are we they, in? They All right. The playoffs, yeah. So the Eagles are in, right? So, yeah, yeah. The Eagles okay. are in. And also, we're both us and the 49ers are 9-7. and seven. So if the 49ers lost last week, 
or next week, excuse me, and the Eagles win, they you would guys. flip spots. But okay. at the same time, it gets to the conversation of would you rather play Tampa if they're still in the same spots or L.A.? Where right now the Eagles are playing Los Angeles. If they flip, they would be playing Tampa. So it's like where right, Los well, Angeles has been struggling more recently than, than other Tampa. than if your name is Odell Beckham. Uh, the where uh, then uh, Tampa has been as much where Beckham I, uh, um, since he's uh, gone to the Rams, uh, the Browns, and gone to the Rams has decided he is Odell Beckham and doesn't have any issues and is going back to being the Giants level Odell Beckham. Uh, yeah, so know, <laughs> but, they, they actually but have a guy. They actually have a quarterback there to throw him the ball. I mean, I yeah, that just proves the ad is certain players don't work in certain situations. Because Odell Beckham was great in, with the Giants until he had a falling out, obviously, but that was a lot on the organization. Uh, and then he was great with the – well, he's great now with the Rams. And then the Browns, that was – they never but had see, the he was, when he yeah, first But see, he was supposed to be there with his boy Landry and, you know, and those two fought for number one and then neither one of them got it. And then, you know what I mean? So it was just like this big, giant Well, they also were more waste of a running of offense. Like it didn't yeah. really make sense for two upper echelon receivers to be like two of the best in the game to be on the corners of a running offense. Didn't make any sense. But, but did like it? that, 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 that also. And, and, and you don't have a quarterback that's back there gunslinging it. Yeah, ba- yeah. Baker's a game manager. Baker's not. Yeah, a, he's not a Baker's gunslinger. Not a gunslinger. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> and Odell Beckham and Landry are receivers for gunslingers. Yeah, that's why Eli, at the end of his career, used Odell, right? Because at that point, he didn't have the same throwing skill. He just launched that thing up. And And Odell would just run under it. Go go catch it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, So, (laughs) I mean, it's nice to have those types of guys. Um, But, no, yeah, the Eagles were able to clinch. The NFC picture also um, looked a lot different because of results this week. The Cowboys moved down to fourth. The yeah. now play Cardinals, who were fit, that ended up beating them. That was the surprise win. Uh, that was I a, I, I, yeah, I actually was watching that Dallas game. Was win. Yeah. And then uh, because Arizona's been struggling coming in, I the know. Out. Dallas has been better, and then Dallas played bad until they started making it up a bit, and then they just still couldn't win. Right. And then you obviously now have Tampa playing San Fran, and the Eagles will play LA. That's how it would shake out right now so, with all right so let me so let me pose this question to you now okay so eagles have two games left right uh no we just play uh dallas that's it that's the last game dallas yeah we're done, yeah, we're done after dallas yeah. all right okay so if you beat dallas right you leapfrog dallas right no, no, no. We can't win the division. We can only physically be in the wild card still. The Eagles have no chance of winning the division because Dallas is eleven and five. We're ten and we would be ten and seven. Okay. So they would be eleven and six. And okay. We would be ten and seven. Yeah. Okay. All right. So there's no way to get past them. So, and technically, the Eagles, the only thing that would, the only thing that, so if they lose, they either play, L. A. Or Tampa Bay. It would depend on what the 49ers do. Weeks. Yeah, it would depend how the well yeah, and also it would depend on how the weeks of the Rams and Tampa do to see if those teams would flip second to third or So either way you slice it, they're either gonna play Tampa Bay or the Rams. It it would seem so, but I think if the let me look at um because the Cowboys, like I said, are eleven. 11 yeah, and still, 5. The Rams yeah. are 12 and 4. So Ooh, if they lose. Yeah, if, if the if the Rams lose and the Cowboys win, they and, they can and, bump. If, if, if the Rams and Bucks both lose and the Cowboys win, they would then be all at 12 and 5. And I don't know who has the tiebreakers at that point. Oh wow. What seeding? So Oh wow. Okay. Um, wow. So at that point, they would be playing whatever one of those three teams. I don't know who has the tiebreakers. Uh, of then, the three teams. Yeah, for who would have the tiebreaker to be second, who would have the tiebreaker. Right. Of those three teams, so, who do you think the Eagles have a best shot at of winning? 
Um, of the three, I would probably have to just because you have the most energy for it. It's an interdivision game. I'd probably have to say Dallas. Okay. Uh, because you're playing an interdivision game that's going to bring you the most uh, okay. energy coming into it as well. Um, I think, and it's a team you're very familiar with, so you're going to have the right. bad aspect of it as well. Right. But if it, if I had to pick between the Rams and Tampa, I would probably s- slightly lean LA. Either way, I don't think Philadelphia is going to be able to, to take care of Tampa Bay and or the Rams. I think they have a shot against Dallas, depending on how they – if they beat Dallas – Next week, right? Does that mean that they do they sweep Dallas for the year or do they split? Um, split. Yeah, we didn't beat. Okay, I'm pretty sure we lost to Dallas. All right, so that'll be the rubber match if that happens. And I've always found that those games tend to be the most exciting games. Yeah, we actually got smoked by Dallas. That was forty-one twenty-one. Forty-one twenty. Yeah, that's okay. So yeah, this would be if they. If Dallas wins and Tampa, which I don't see them losing, and or if – you know what I mean? Like it depends on if some of these other teams – I don't know. Who does Tampa play last? Who does L.A. play last? If they play each other, then – No, Tampa plays – the Rams are playing – I'm trying to see for week uh, – here we go, week 18 – the Rams are playing the 49ers, so that's actually – so depending that, on – That game, bodes well but, for you then. Um, And then the Tampa is playing Carolina, so that should be a win for Tampa. That should be Tam- – yeah. So that bodes well, the Rams playing the 49ers. Um, Rams winning that game um, helps you guys, helps the Eagles – Right, mm-hmm. because they need to. They still need to win. If they win, they leapfrog over the 49ers, and then they they would play um, Tampa Bay. Then, uh, yeah, yeah, there would be. Okay. There's a bunch of different movements that can um happen uh at that point. Like I said, usually I just follow up with the baseline of tell me who we're playing that week, and then there you go. Uh, the, where, <laughs> I don't, where different maneuvering things, I don't try to keep up with okay uh, so but still though the nfc the nfc green bay is looking like the big dog then tampa bay right yeah the rams and then the rams tampa bay and- also took a hit because say what you want about it about him off the field but on the field antonio brown's one of the best receivers so he's no longer with the bucks um so they did they did take a skill level hit um, True. Now they haven't like, had him for the last and three Chris weeks. Chris Godwin also has a torn ACL. Yeah. So it's not like he's coming back. So all you have is Mike Evans at the. That's a number one. Right. Uh, at this point, as a receiver, yeah. and then you have Gronk obviously at the right. tight end position. And so. and the Cowboys also got some bad news too, uh, with one of their uh, top receivers now being out with a uh, torn ACL as well too. Oh, yeah, yeah. What are you talking about, Gallup? Dallas. The Cowboys. Yeah. I... They they just lost somebody to a torn ACL. I think it was one of their um... – Gallup, right? Isn't Gallup out with a torn ACL? Yeah, or that's it. So... No, that's who I'm talking about. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's who I'm talking about. But they just found that out today. So, I mean, that's another that's another blow to them. You know what I mean? So Yeah, that's a big blow to them. But also, Dallas is Toronto. So, you have to see yeah. Dallas win a playoff game first before you can right. do I'm anything. They're literally the Maple Leafs. So, it's like the, the, they see them win, and then we'll go from there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. So... Months. Here we go now. Uh, we we gotta we gotta address this, okay? Just because I feel like I have to anyway. Tonight is a uh, Monday night football game with the Steelers and the Browns, and this is potentially looking like this might be Ben's last game at Heinz Field. And uh, I'm just kind of curious as to what your assessment is of Roethlisberger 
he's 18 years, one, one team. What do you, what, what do you ever, what did you think of Ben? What do you think of his career as far as what he's done, what he's put together? And what, how, what, how, how do you look at Ben Roethlisberger? Where do you put Ben Roethlisberger in the pantheon of quarterbacks? Um, just from eyesight, I would say he was for a period of time when he could move um, and actually had the kind of bus level uh, mentality to him where he was going to let nothing stop him. He was one of the better quarterbacks in the game. That's how he won the Super Bowl for him and had that pass of kind of having the no stop. Uh, until you drop mentality um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to uh, Holmes. Um, towards the end, do I think Ben could have came off a little bit better? Yeah, I think he probably could have came off a little bit better towards the end of his career. It seemed like he kind of had that Jay Cutler, I don't give a crap, that people used to always get on Cutler for coming off as. With post career, he said that wasn't the case at all. I always just looked like I didn't care. Where it's probably the same for Ben, but like – perception becomes reality so i feel like at a certain point you have to care about what people are perceiving you to be and i think the one thing ben didn't do enough in his career was care about that and that might be what hurts him when it comes to the voting for when you do eventually get to uh because usually hall of fame voters sometimes don't love guys that don't seem to care like for example if jay cutler had hall of fame stats it might take him but he doesn't but if he did, it might have taken him a couple years again because people would be like, he seemed to just not give a crap about the game. He kind of just played it to yeah. play. Where Ben, okay. at the beginning of his career, I think really cared. And then when he started aging and losing it, I think he kind of just showed up for the thing he loved at that point and was kind of, he fits into the same category of me as Eli does. I think he could have left a couple years sooner and it would have done yeah. betterment than that hanging around. I think yeah. he would have said he had a better career if he left two years ago, where now you're going to say, well, the last two years were okay, but they were nothing compared to the first. I mean, years. it's so a like, lot of players to, do that. You have to ju- yeah, you have to judge. We talked about it before the podcast. The biggest thing to the end of any athlete's career is judging when you're just a harm to yourself. And exactly. You're- um, and- exactly. Some guys are not a good job at doing that. Other guys like Kyle Seeger, we brought up the Seegers by accident earlier, in baseball decided to become a dad and retire before he had to. So he went out in his own terms. Yeah, some Jim Brown out. did the same thing. Yeah, and some guys go out when the body literally says, you can't move. Like yeah, Brett right. For example, um, and you can't play football anymore. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I mean I- – I don't know. I probably would have fallen into that category where I would have to be that person that couldn't walk anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just I would have thought that. Yeah, that's what I would have thought growing up because I was always that ath- athlete playing. Like I went back out. I kicked with my left foot when I had a high ankle sprain in the soccer players when I'm actually a righty until I could feel with my right foot kicking and it wouldn't kill every five seconds. Um, you know? <laughs> um, so, but I feel like if I was in the pros, eventually I would have got to a point where I would have said, like, I can give back to these kids that are on my team. Now I might as well just start, I might as well just start mentoring other people in some role capacity or to yeah. if you're a player that they yeah. want to give an advisory role to, to start working into the front office accept an advisory role with the team you played for most of your career and then work your way yeah. up from there. Eventually I feel like I would have, when I'm still going to be around the game just as much, I'm just not going to be the one physically playing anymore. But, yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. Cause like, look at what Peyton Manning did. I mean, this guy, I mean, you know, he's the yeah, student of the game. Football mastermind. <laughs> uh, but yeah. But I mean, have you ever watched that? <laughs> Like yeah. I, I yeah, love yeah, watching that. Yeah, that's great. I'd much rather watch those guys than than the crew they have calling the game. That well, nobody ever realized Eli was so quiet in his career that everybody always tells him this. Nobody ever realized how funny Eli Manning was because he was such a quiet individual. Where Peyton was always the more would actually speak and be a little bit more. Eli See, was always now. More, I've read things about know? Eli where he's more of. The jokester, and he's more no, of yeah. the. But no, knew that because yeah, he because he, he never. That's not the persona that he portrays. Yeah, Manning, or Manning was more out, 
like open with his personality a little bit. Yeah. Deep. Eli as a player was not where post player no. he jokes around all the time. He messes with people all the time yeah. and he talks about how he used to mess with people in his career, but he never would have said that probably if he was still playing. Exactly. Like he was always something that kept it close to the vest when he was playing. I mean, well, if you look at Eli Manning and here was a guy who came out and basically said, look, if you draft me, I'm not playing for you. Oh, the choice. Yeah. And what do the Chargers do? They drafted him. And he was like, well, I'm not going to play for you guys. But then they turned around and traded him. You know what Very I mean? And so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, boy, that was a, woo, boy, that somebody got their short end of the stick on that one, I think, big time. <laughs> but, well, man, I'll tell you what, we got, um, the, we're, we're coming down to the wire here with the NFL, um, where, um, Seeding is starting to be more important now and where teams finish the year um, one to two games left um, coming out here. And I'm going to say this. I've been watching the Steelers for a very, very long time. I've seen in my lifetime, I've seen three coaches now for the Pittsburgh Steelers in my lifetime. I've seen a plethora of quarterbacks come in and out of that locker room yeah well, that's that. going to be a bigger turnstile that has to physically be a bigger turnstile than coaches just logistically <laughs> yes yeah. sir but i let me say this for the last 18 years i have never seen a more consistent ready to play top tier level quarterback in ben roethlisberger i mean Everybody looked at the Steelers and was like, man, after Terry Bradshaw was like, well, now what? And Cordell Stewart came in and, oh, he was a flash. And Neil O'Donnell came in and, and he was a flash, you know. And then they drafted Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, so, I mean, kid just came in and just, I mean, his first season, he was 15 and one. I mean, who does that as their rookie year comes in? Their starting yeah. quarter, starting quarterback gets hurt, and you come in and just rattle off fifteen straight wins. What? No, I, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I think the beginning. I would say for the first ten, played an eighteen year tour, ten to twelve years of his career, he yeah. was definitely consistently in the top tier of the. Uh, yes. league, and then probably for a, about three year stretch after that was in the still in the middle. Yeah. So then to come back at down. times would have those couple weeks where you're like, okay, now I'm going to move him back up to tenth, and then he would come back down to fifth. Yeah. So yeah. it would be like in that where yeah. now the reason now why I think he harmed himself too much is he's in the twenty somethings now, yeah. where he wouldn't have been that if he retired two years ago. He would have retired as probably being at the back end of the word 17th in most people's eyes, right out of the top 15 at retirement. Wouldn't have been pro in the 20s. And yeah. that, that that's why, like, um, I, I think you you don't as a player, you obviously want to keep playing until you until you want to keep playing. You don't think about that stuff, but you want to you don't also don't want to harm yourself for all the great things you accomplished beforehand exactly. by your legacy harnessing your legacy when it yeah. comes to when voting comes to shove exactly. and people uh, look at it a little bit differently so super well joe i'll tell you what man uh we got a great show here for you to this this week guys we we didn't really we covered just two sports because really that's kind of what's going on right now um the nhl is starting to get back and we're starting to have regular games now again and and so that's awesome and the uh nfl is heating up now because playoffs are getting ready to start here in a couple weeks so man i'll tell you what it's exciting also joe i see that uh you've been covering more of the 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 uh, minor league uh, teams now they're starting to come back, right? So I'm starting to see more and more coverage from you to do that, right? You got articles and everything, and I also would like to say this too, um, Joe. We cordially invite you to the Hockey Writer Zinc uh, show for this week. We would like to have you come on with uh, me and Lance and join us for the show. What do you say? Yeah, it would be awesome. I love talking about any time I get invited to talk about the Flyers, typically that's going to be a yes. Yeah, man. <laughs> even All if, right. Even if there's some 
or more negative than positive to talk about? Well, we've we've been. I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw a special thing here for you, so you can be a little bit prepared. Okay. What we've done on the show is we've basically said, okay, I've been, become the owner of the Flyers, and Lance is now the GM. So you might be brought in as the head coach. Okay. Okay. Or you might be brought in as a assistant GM or so start thinking about where you want to go and what you want to do, because we, we thought of this great idea that we want to rebuild this team because the flyers need to be rebuilt. Seriously. We feel that they need to be rebuilt from the ground up from ownership all the way down. So that's what we're going with. Okay. Are you down? Yeah. Yeah. I'm down with that. Cool. I'll probably have more keepers than you guys because I think uh, there's certain guys that have to stick around. Mm, oh, what? You might not be you might not be as surprised as you think. Okay. We might be keeping more guys than you think is what I'm trying to say. So, man, another edition of the JB and Steel show. We got great stuff going on here. Got to go check out the website www.steelflyers.com. Joe, why don't you tell the folks where they can reach you, where they can get all your great articles, where they can get your coverage of the Reading Royals and all the great stuff you're doing for Flyers Nitty Gritty. Yeah, uh, JJ Bora 26 to reach me is the best spot because I don't respond to anything on Facebook Messenger. I just started responding to a Royals fan on there because it's the only thing he has. Um, but my, for most, I don't respond on Facebook Messenger. It's a lot easier to get me on Twitter. Um, yep. Where... Um, then I'm also on Flyers Nitty Gritty, right, for all the teams there, the Reading Royals, the Phantoms, and also, of course, the Philadelphia Flyers. And then on the Great Steel Flyers website as well as my Sports Fanatic news page that I'm doing, like Steel said, different minor league coverage uh, for different teams throughout the time and try to fit in talk of uh, all the teams um, where I'm doing a beginning of year reports for different teams, but I'm combining them for the minors because I don't have time to do individual ones. So that's why I did the first <laughs> one with a couple teams. Yep. As a whole. That's what I'm doing for all of them. Like I there did you the go. Check out Joe's stuff, man. That's why we call him Pro Joe because he is the professor. I promise you will learn something because Joe knows more about hockey than what most people have forgotten. Okay. So check out Joe. Please follow him. Please check him out. Check out the JB and Steel Show. This is Volume 7, right? Volume yep. 7. There you go. All right. You can follow me on Twitter at SteelFlyers52. You can also follow me on the web at www.steelflyers.com. Thank you all very much for watching the JB and Steel Show. We'll catch you all on the next edition.